Hey everyone, God bless you. I'm going to share a message with you that has probably already shown to be relevant in your life as a follower of Jesus Christ. If it hasn't, um, then I hope that this will be a great resource to help you not really fall into it as much as many people often do. And that is that as a follower of Jesus Christ, we start to feel worn and we uh, sometimes feel like we're working to know God, we're, we're working to, to be a Christian versus uh, laying hold of God's way uh, where we're actually called to stay in a place of joy and peace, the fruit of righteousness, this, and this godly rest that Jesus Christ has made a way for. I'm going to read a scripture that most of you have probably heard before. It's in Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to start at verse 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus Christ is the perfect shepherd. He is the shepherd and overseer of your soul as a follower of him, as somebody who has received salvation through Jesus Christ, who now has access to our Heavenly Father and to be a vessel for him, to know him, and even to reveal the kingdom of God here as children of God while we're yet on earth in this era. So you've come to Jesus. I'm speaking to those as, as unto those who are saved. You've come to Jesus, the one who cares for your soul, who wants your soul blessed. But have you ever thought about what your soul is. I'm just going to go here briefly. You have your physical body. You have your spirit. And if you're again, your follower of Jesus Christ, you have a new spirit. You're born again. Uh, John chapter 3, that which is born of spirit is spirit. And those who follow Jesus Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus as the Christ, follow him according to 1 John 5, 1. We are the children of God. So we're literally born of God. But then you have your soul. And kind of how I see my soul at least using this sort of language, is my sense of presence, my sense of perception. Um, there's a scripture that where Paul says, I would that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Because when we lay hold of God, God's ways, as, as we just read, learn of me. When we, when we follow him as our shepherd, our soul is meant to be blessed. Uh, you're going to go through battles, doesn't mean you're not a follower of Jesus Christ just because you're down, you're feeling beat up or anything like that. God will not let you go. He, he will in no wise cast out those who come to him. And that's what's important is that we're coming to him. We're not forsaking him because he will not forsake us. But he wants your soul blessed. He, he, uh, there's a scripture that says it's a good, the Father has good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And there's great things that that pertains to. But there also is a scripture that says, and maybe you've heard me say this before, that the, righteousness, or that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. So the fruit of righteousness, see, he's a, he's a righteous one now in you. You're a new creation. You now have the ability to live out true righteousness, the righteousness of the laws written on your heart. Um, shalom, the holy peace that only God can give. That is now your, part of your inheritance. And joy unspeakable and full of glory. That is God's will for you. Uh, he cares not just for you to be, get to heaven later. He cares for you now. He even, in a sense, cares for your feelings, if it's right to say that way. He, he cares about how your your emotional state is. This is maybe a better way for me to say that. Your soul, your your sense of you know, presence, your your mind, your perception, your, your will, which as a Christian is no longer my will, but thy will be done. Uh, it's all meant to be blessed. So, as we just read, Jesus wants you to know this great rest he has made a way for as being the perfect shepherd. As a Christian, we have access to life and life more abundantly. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures says that we have all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Uh, we're called to always triumph through Christ Jesus. We're called to live out the reality of, have, of having authority over darkness. Um, we have access to this great salvation, to the real thing. Uh, to his powerful inheritance, we have access to God's best as his children. God's kind, he wants his best for his creation, but because you have received Jesus, you now have, you now have access to ask according to his will and receive and walk as a dear child of God. But as much as that's true, 
you are in a spiritual battle. And sometimes people want to avoid that topic, but when you acknowledge truth for what it really is, you're, you're not as easily blind, uh, if it's right to say, I'm not sure if I even understand it right, but blindsided, you're not, you're not easily taken off guard. We, we are of the light and we walk in the light. Uh, we're not overtaken by things because we're walking in the light. We're called to be sober and watchful in prayer, staying in that place of holy communion, <coughs> excuse me, with the Holy Spirit. So you are in a spiritual battle and as a follower of Jesus Christ, again, not my will, but thy will be done. You're a vessel for God's will now. And anything that God is leading is of true power, of true, true virtue, of true value. Um, see, man is going to do his works and thinks he's, he would even proclaim he's doing for God. But when, the, when those works are tried with fire, it's going to show really what manner of works those were. Again, a Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ, which means, again, not my will, but thy will be done. Carrying your cross daily, right? Uh, like Jesus set the example of carrying his cross for the joy set before him in obedience to the Holy Father. So, as a Christian, we're vessels for God's will. And anything that God is leading is of true value. It's going to carry value, as, as I was about to say, unto eternity. Because if he's the author of it, of course, it, of course when it's tried by fire, it's going to show it was, it was the right thing because it was what he was leading. So, as much and as awesome as that is, uh, if God's the author of it, that which is against the work of God is also against you. And that's one of the reasons we must stay close to, to God. So if our soul is meant to be blessed, then how is it that the enemy gets in? Uh, there's a scripture that says, abstain from the lust of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. In other words, when we give into the selfish desires of the carnal nature, it doesn't mean we're losing our, uh, our access to heaven uh, now and later, but it, it, what it does mean is we're letting the enemy come into our house to bring some robbery, some thievery, to steal your righteousness, peace, and joy from you, which you're called to have. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're going to be stuck there for a while. You just turn to God, and he, he is the restorer, truly. Salvation isn't just later. Salvation is now. Even for the, the depths of what salvation means, to be saved, experience salvation, is such a great, powerful thing. And I'm just going to keep saying it, even for your own sense of peace, that is part of your inheritance as a child of God. Again, I'm supposed to say it again, your sense of peace. God cares about that. He has called you to a holy peace in him. He cares for your soul and he wants you to find rest and refuge in him. So the enemy, he's trying to find a way in. And now I don't want to sound too legalistic, say, oh, it's your fault. It's your fault. Sickness and all that. See, we're, there's, there's, it's hard to say some of these topics shortly and simply. Um, such, for example, when the disciples said, who, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? He said, no, it wasn't even that. It was, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was that because uh, God was going to be glorified through this and he was healed, right? But at the same time, it is true that the enemy does give, get access when we let him in. So realistically, we are maturing. We're going from glory to glory, right? We're, we're always a work in progress. We're always growing. We're always being renewed. Um, by the Holy Spirit to live out the truth within us, to live out the reality of being a child of God. We're growing and being unshakable. But at the same time, when we are divided, we are vulnerable. When we as a body of Christ are divided, we're vulnerable to attacks of the enemy. When we as a ministry are divided, we're vulnerable to attacks of the enemy. And we oftentimes have seen the enemy just have a heyday with ministries because of division and just not following the, following the Lord wholeheartedly. But also, I'm going to speak to you as my brother and sister in Christ. Uh, we've all been there. We're, uh, there's even a scripture that says, where, where do these debates, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it again, um, come, where, where, where is this drama, <laughs> let me give the Tim version, where is this coming from? Is, this, is it not the war going on inside in your, your inner members is, it's your own inner issues that are causing these other things outwardly to happen. So what I'm getting at is you do not want to be divided inwardly in your affections. We want to love God with all that we are. It's not just because God wants all of our heart. Like, um, It's not just he's like, uh, how do I say this? He's not telling you to love him just be, just out of selfishness. It's even It's even also for your own well-being to love God with all you are, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, with 
your entire being to set your love upon him. Psalms 91, it, it promises these things that pertain to protection, but the condition is to set your love upon him. So if we're realistic, as much as there's great promises concerning protection, we realize that we're getting hurt. And again, there's, there's reality of battle and all that. And I'm not saying stuff is necessarily your fault when stuff is going on. But sometimes it is, again, because you have opened the door for darkness to try to hurt you. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you, but you gave it permission. It'd be, um, it's, it's a really practical example here. Um, let's say God says, don't do that. Don't, don't drink that from that cup. I mean, it can sound symbolic, but I'm going to say literal, okay? We'll say something like you you go out to a restaurant, right? And somebody buys you a drink. Are you going to hell for drinking alcohol? No, we're not supposed to, to get drunk in excess as in with wine. We're, God wants you to experience something greater, a continual filling of his Holy Spirit. But if God told you not to do something, and you don't know that somebody has slipped something in that drink, right? See, God was trying to protect you, but you, you went after the passions of the flesh and your own selfish desire, and through though God was demonstrating his kindness to want to protect you, you can hear it symbolically as well. The enemy was able to bring harm. And we, we hear of ladies um, who are assaulted because of these very things. You know, they're going out with friends. Um, they might even have intention to get drunk, but somebody just slips something and they take advantage of them. We don't want to give the enemy place. We don't want to give him a foothold at all into our souls. So, uh, a big part of this message is to be all in. We want to be all in with our affections for our Lord Jesus Christ. Because honestly, we're exhausted when we're not all in. And that's that's kind of the paradox, if it's okay to say it like that, of this, is sometimes we're, we're striving to stay close to God to experience His salvation, but we're striving out of our own efforts and instead of, um, and this is part of the discipleship process of growing and knowing God, is that we learn to walk in this holy flow where I don't have to be so regimented and feel guilty because I didn't do something, or, you know, those kinds of things. He wants you to learn to walk with him, but it is good. I'll, I'll go ahead and have a side, side thing here for a moment. It is very good to have discipline. Uh, to, when you wake up to make a solid decision, I'm going to pray no matter what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to renew my mind with the, the holy word of God. These are quality decisions. I'm going to stay faithful to be connected to the ministry that God has called me to. These are great disciplines. I'm going to be faithful in my giving. Um, but God doesn't want you to think as in a matter of I have to, I have to, I have to. But as, you, as you're renewed and you learn to walk in the Spirit, it's the overflow of your heart that uh, His commandments are not grievous. Uh, his leading is actually a, a delight to you. But again, dis the discipline is a great thing. But what happens, again is sometimes people exhaust, exhaust themselves because it's not always God leading every detail of that. So, and then also what happens is when we are giving our affections in other directions besides Jesus Christ, we get divided inwardly. That's the, that's the main point I'm making on this video is when your affections are divided, then you're actually, it's weird, you actually will, exha it's exhausting to not be all in. It is exhausting to not love God with all that you are because that's where you're safe. That's where you're laying hold of the ways of life. And as much as you might be going through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because God is with you. His holy peace can be with you in what would seem like the most hardest times. And what happens a lot of times is when we're going through something hard, we go back to our old ways, right? And uh, that's where addictions can come in. And it doesn't mean God stopped loving you. It doesn't mean he's not there but then you start hurting yourself. So you have access to all things that pertain to life and godliness, but you're hurting yourself. God cares for you. He doesn't want you to be abusing yourself uh, with different kinds of addictions. He, he, he wants you to lay hold of the way of life. So maybe you do need to lay hold of some good disciplines. You need to take care of some of these foundational things that you cannot compromise on, being renewed by the word, staying in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and prayer, uh, being around a community of believers. These are great, powerful resources that God has ordained for us so that we can be strengthened together as the body of Christ. Jesus Christ is the vine. We're the branches. We, we need to stay close to him so we can bear good fruit. Um, but so when we're not fully in with our affections towards Christ, it's like going into a battle already broken. You're already wounded and you're going into battle. 
like it or not, you are in a battle every day. And what's sobering is a lot of times people think they're victorious, um, but they're actually deceived. Um, they're shouting the devil's under my feet while they're enslaved to so many sins. Um, and that's why, uh, that's a whole other topic, but the fear of the Lord is very conducive for true life. Uh, say that again, when you, when you reverence and fear the Lord, that helps you have a sober mindset, perception of reality, um, so that you even can discern what's good and bad. Um, the Bible even warns that what's going to happen, and it is happening, it has been happening, is that people will call what is good evil and call what is evil good. But it really honestly comes back to, is Jesus your Lord? And um, if this helps you explain to other people, because I know a lot of people who are connected to this, they're already on the, the thank God, on the right track, you know, following Jesus. We're all in different places, but he loves each of us. Um, but what's happening now these days is salvation isn't even being clearly presented anymore in ministries. And so there's no repentance anymore. There's no, it's just saying a, a rhetoric uh, phrase, a uh, phrase like, um, based on something good, Romans 10, 9, um, but there's no turning our hearts to following Jesus. There's no carrying of the cross. So it's no, it's no longer Christianity. It's just coming. And there's so many things that can come in the form of godliness, but this is one example where it's coming into form of godliness, but it's, um, we're not actually walking in the power of it. We're not following Jesus Christ who wants us to walk in victory and wants us to walk in true power. So we want to stay close to Jesus Christ as much as we're in a battle. He is the victorious king. He always causes us to triumph through Christ Jesus. Even when you stumble, even when you do give place to the enemy, to the lust of the flesh, his, his, his right arm is strong. He will not let you go. He will not forsake you. Just because you're going through something, again, doesn't mean that he has left you. You're actually growing in this. You're learning to find out where are you shakeable. And again, maybe where are you not disciplined? Where are you divided? in your affections. Again, um, where are you divided in your affections? I'm preaching to myself here too. We want to love God with all that we are because that, that's where we're in that holy place of protection where we're living out and growing in, knowing what we have in our inheritance, of, including our righteousness, peace, and joy. I'm going to read Matthew 11, 28 through, 20, and through 30 again. Come to me, all, that you, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He cares for you. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You know, part of why his yoke is easy and his burden is light, because when you come to him and you lay hold of his ways, and you just, even it's just staying close to him in your own heart, it's God working in you both to want to do his good pleasure and to even accomplish it, according to the scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. And in clothing, uh, closing, I want to read uh, Psalm 23 and with hopes that the Holy Spirit would minister to you in a way that you receive more from him maybe than you've ever heard from his word before. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my oil, and my head with oil. My cup runs over. How much do you want? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I hear the Lord saying that he wants to comfort you. The Spirit of God is here with us, and how much more, as his children, does he want you to know the good things he has in store for you, that he wants you to know the love he has for you, and this holy peace and uh, blessed soul that he has called you to have and know. He loves you. Love you guys. Thanks for listening, and have a blessed Christmas. Have a blessed time, whether you celebrate Christmas or not. Have a blessed time uh, in the presence of the Lord. Every day is a day that the Lord has made. We rejoice. We celebrate Jesus every day. And as we go into our Gregorian calendar of 2018, um, I pray that this would be even a greater year of you knowing Jesus Christ as a, the perfect shepherd who cares for your soul.